Um, awesome. Yeah, like I was saying, this is the eighth ever knowledge drop. Welcome to it. Thank you guys for joining us in our little Zoom webinar this morning. Um, and just for those maybe first time people who are joining or might have forgotten how this is going to work is I'm going to intro Jacqui in just a moment here and then he's going to share his screen and go through a deck that he prepared for us about what he does for a living, which is design and, and how he's gotten to where he is with that now. Um, and we'll save some questions for the very end. Feel free during any part of this uh, presentation if you want to open the question and answer box. So there's a chat box and a question and answer box. Uh, feel free to use either if you just want to like be chatting with each other or be like awesome or whatever, jump in the chat box. But if you have a question that you want to make sure that you don't forget, feel free to put it in there and Jock, we can get to those. At the very end. Um, and yeah, this is all recorded and it'll be put in the archive. That's um, we have like a remote your YouTube channel now, so it'll be put in there and then share it on the Knowledge Drop archive for future remotes and generations to learn from Jockery and from what he what he's going to share with us today. So without further ado, what's up, man? Good to, good to have you here. Good to be here. Hello, everyone. That's joining. I'm going to uh, share my screen now. Do, do, do. Boom. Let's do it. Nice job. All right. So this is the Knowledge Drop. Um, we're going to go into, well, you know what? First and foremost, this template, not, not doing it for me. It, it, it's just crazy when I look at it. So do something a little bit more cool. Um, so what I want to speak about today is design thinking, but it's a journey to creative freedom. Um, I'm essentially going to go through my own personal um, experience and journey and kind of tie that into how I, I, I came about this creative freedom, um, making me a little bit more thoughtful in what I do. And, and creative at the same time. So what's about to drop? Taking off your mask and trusting your journey. Um, believe in your magic and embrace your crazy. We'll go through um, each one of those individually in the upcoming slides. Um, again, as Travis said, any questions or you know any interest that you have, comments that you wanna put in, just go ahead and do so. And we'll speak about it at the end. Um, What's, no, it's why am I dropping? So I mastered depression, guys, <laughs> and overcame suicidal thoughts. Um, we're, we'll dip into that a little bit more, um, but clinically depressed about two years ago, diagnosed, and I was living in New York, wasn't really happy, um, leading me to drop Madison Avenue to pursue my passions and to find myself. Um, and I'm, I'm right now I'm on this spiritual journey as well, so I'm connecting to my higher self and source energy. Um, and at the height of this year, I actually launched a remote creative studio, Dyad Creative. So, um, yeah, I feel like I'm apt to talk about this, share my experience with you guys, and hopefully you guys receive it well. All right, me. So, uh, I love everything. So, I'm originally, <laughs> I'm originally from the Bahamas. Let's start there. Um, so, island boy at heart, uh, family migrated to Florida. So, between Miami and the Bahamas, the weather, I, I really like warm climates. I'm a beach guy. Um, I love photography. I think I'm pretty cool. I love music. I love singing. I want to release an EP within the next two years. This is just like, you know, things plant those seeds and push through with my goals. Um, I, I was a little bit of a fashion freak before remote year, so I'm slowly getting back into that. Um, yeah. I can, I can attest to Jackie's singing too, because we, we remember when we did the same Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah, we oh, did. guess what? So, Travis and I did an open mic in Mexico City, and um, I felt like I totally bombed. Like, I had one too many drinks trying to calm my nerves. This is a big fear of mine, singing in public. And um, I stopped drinking after that day because I felt like, you know, I kind of messed up my performance. I had been practicing and all this. So, that's interesting to know. For me, you were great anyway, but yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Wait, yeah. Fuck it, mask off. All right. So in trusting our journey, we have um, to do a few things, right? Unapologetically be ourselves, understand everything we've gone through made us and know ourselves to be most fulfilled. We have to know ourselves to be most fulfilled. fulfilled. Um, this this kind of thinking kind of came about when I read a book called Wired to Create and said unraveling the, the mind of a creative. And um, the book goes into seven uh, qualities or characteristics of very uh, creative people. Um, and I'm talking to Einstein's Picasso, Da Vinci, and they parallel each of these qualities to one of these greats. 
And so when I read the book, one aspect of it that really hit home for me was intuition. Um, and you know what, I want to say another one, imaginative play. And I feel like intuition and imaginative play are two things that through the course of our lives, we, um, we, it starts to deteriorate, right? Our sense of self, our sense of knowing that um, our gut is what we should be following um, because there's so many other factors in living and being, right? Um, but imaginative play as well, like we lose that sense of being a kid, you know, like that sense of, you know, coming up with ideas and, and really doing so without being bounded or restricted for what's possible. All right, so my first step was to trust, trust my journey and I had to take, I take away the masks. I was wearing so many different masks in different facets of my life, like from corporate America to different, fam different family circles, because I have two sides of family, then they're breaking out, different social circles. It was just becoming too much. So I said, you know what? I feel like I'm not consistent. I'm not authentic. Um, and I had to start stripping away those masks and being unapologetically myself. And from there, it, it, it brought about a question of, you know, do I believe in magic? Uh, you know, around New York, there's this guerrilla campaign that has been going on for years, and it's protect your magic. You'll see it, like, plastered everywhere, on the streets, on the subway, whatever, protect your magic. And the first time I saw that, I probably, I think I was coming from a night class at Parsons School of Design in New York, and I'm on the subway, sad as hell, because I was aggressive. And so many stresses of life were just upon me. And I look up and I see this sign. And, 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 and for the life of me, I, I knew that I had to dig into it a little bit more deeply. So um, trusting my journey, removing my mask, and protecting my magic. And first I had to realize that I'm a magical creature, right? And we all are, all are magical creatures. So I started looking at myself as magical. And I believe I have superpowers. And my superpowers come through in my different talents and different skill sets. And so do, does everyone else's. Um, so then I was led to question every single thing and look deeper for life's answers. You know, like I had, I had it all. Like I would say, <laughs> nice apartment. Um, I had the degrees on the wall. I had the job. I had the salary. I had all these things. But it was just like something is missing. And all that something was already inside of me. So everything you need is inside of yourself. And again, this is, this is my journey to creative freedom, realizing what kind of set my heart ablaze and realizing what made me feel the most free. Because only then I think we can be able to do our best work and inspire others and just be creative in every sense of the word. And if you don't think, I mean, this is this unicorn that Gianna drew in one of our creative workshops in Cambodia. Uh, that's pretty creative. Yeah, I designed it in Photoshop. It's pretty creative, but we're all creative in different ways. It's not just silo to design or um, arts. It's, it's every single day problems, just being creative in your mind and being open to the different possibilities of what a solution can be. So we're magical and you guys gotta believe that. That made me feel magical. I love that. Thanks. You said you, it made you feel what? It made me feel more magical. I was like, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> Embrace your crazy. Okay. So for a long time, I kind of was down on myself on, gosh, I'm weird. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm just weird. I like a whole lot of different things, uh, uh, all types of music. I like to try, um, I love tattoos. I like to try different piercings. That was kind of back in the day. But it's like, I felt like I was taboo, you know? I felt like I was taboo. And it, 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 it added to the stress, it added to the press, depression. And so I would say embrace your crazy, be just as crazy as you know you are. We all are pretty batshit. And um, I think it's specifically in this remote year group, when I came on and I started meeting everyone, I'm like, these motherfuckers are crazy they're wild they're insane they're open to life and i'm loving it and i felt like i i i molded so well within my group libertatum which is amazingly named because it means freedom and that's exactly what i was trying to push for um so realize just how crazy when you do that you realize just how crazy everyone else is right you see that our depressive states pinpoint areas of improvement 
And I'm going to talk about that really quick. So I started reading up a lot, um, just the psychology uh, of depression and, and what, what thoughts bring it about. And most of the time, it's because we're judging ourselves too harshly on a past event or a certain um, job or project that we didn't get the results that we intended or ideally want. And we start to nitpick at ourselves so meticulously that we become sad, we become closed off from the world, we become just depressed. And what I read though, was that a lot of the greats, different artists and geniuses throughout history, you know, suffered from some type of mental illness is what, you know, society would, would then later on call it, right? But it's, it, 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 I think it's deeper than that. I think embracing your crazy is really embracing every facet of your mind, embracing your quirks, and, and embracing everything that makes you you. And so in these depressive states, in, in the times where you wake up and you don't feel like too motivated to do anything or you're a little sad because of something, those are the times that you have to evaluate exactly why you're feeling that way and what can be done to make it better. Or if it's, a, if it's an event that brought about that depression, depression, then you have to think about what could you have changed, if anything, because remember, if you can't change something, you can't tie, your feel, you can't tie yourself to your emotions about it. But when you're in the depressive state, just look and pinpoint those areas of improvement. Because what I've read is that that's what brings about depression, us overthinking those areas of improvement. When our genuine intuition and feelings that bring us into that sadness and into that depression lies within us knowing exactly where we have to grow within ourselves. So take another glimpse at that. And be more confident in your abilities. Like, you've got the degrees, you've, you've been on, you, if you're doing YouTube University, you've looked at all the videos, you've watched and you've honed in on all these skill sets, you've read so many different articles, you have that value, you have that knowledge of different subject areas, and you have to be more confident in your abilities. And once I started being more confident in my abilities, then my crazy made way more sense. Okay. So keys to success, follow your gut, feel your feelings, feel your feelings. Life is a feeling process. Quoting that from Big Sean, Big Sean's dad, actually. Mm -hmm. Life is a feeling process. That couldn't hit more home to me. I have to, you have to process and you have to feel through um, your feelings. No, just don't let them control you. I'm moving around. I moved to try to find light guys and plug out my computer. So let me do that. Okay, so don't let your feelings control you. I mean, we're so often inundated by our own thoughts and bad emotions. Flush out the negative and let's, let's, let's get it cracking. Let's do, some, let's do some real creative work. Let's, let's be us and be fulfilled inspire and encourage yourself like every single day i'm in the mirror like you a bad mother you know <laughs> and it, it's serious though it, it, it's it's imperative that we encourage ourselves we we uplift ourselves and inspire ourselves we can't continue to look at external factors um for acceptance and, and, and for affirmation that's what brings us into a place where we're limiting our magic and we're limiting the amount of joy that we can instill within our lives and in the lives of other people. So, inspire and encourage yourself. Okay, things not to do, okay? This is where you get derailed. Overthinking what you cannot change. In fact, overthinking period. Overthinking period is just a death trap. It's, a, it's, it's the creative spiral. It presents creative blocks. It presents uh, relationship tension. You're just overthinking every situation and everything that is meant to be in your mind, but that's not reality. Reality is understanding that everything that has happened in your life and will happen in your life is totally free of what, you, what, you, what, you're, what you're thinking in the present, right? You just do the best that you can in present day. You live your life in present day, all right? Leave the sadness and depression in the past right? And avoid all worry and anxiety of the future. So that, and if you don't trust your intuition, if you don't trust that gut feeling you get, even if it's butterflies and you think it's love at first sight, it's worth a go. <laughs> it's worth a go. Um, we, we too often, 
restrict ourselves from from feeling to our fullest, right? To, from from acting on um, our emotions and really being able to process how these emotions affect our well-being, how these emotions affect um, the the events in our lives that will come about from it, right? From from good vibes, from good energy. That intuition is real. That intuition is it, it's divine. And so we have to make sure that we're focused on that and we're, we're, we're not fighting it, you know? So I fought it too much in the past. And I think um, jumping onto remote year and coming here, coming to travel was one of the last really strongholds that I had um, in not trusting myself. Because so many people told me not to do it or not, not, not directly, but you know, oh, well, you're really gonna do that? It's really, really expensive. Or, oh my gosh, there's so many diseases. Oh my gosh, look at the, 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 the amount of tension that's going on in the world. And I'm like, ugh, I live in America. <laughs> I live in America. I was in New, New York and New Jersey had Zika virus and Miami, had, no, Miami had Zika virus. New Jersey had like West Nile at the time. And I'm in the dentist's office like, are you guys crazy? I'm out of here. I had to trust myself. I had to trust my intuition because we all know inside what we need to, fulfill, to be most fulfilled in life and to, 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 to dip into our happiness. So we have to trust that. Okay. So, well, I think we should probably open up for any kind of dialogue or uh, questions because at this point, um, I've, sh I've shared with you guys what, how, how my journey has gone, you know, and I, and I, and I just see it as um, this bud blossoming. I feel like I was just inhibiting myself. I was closed off to so much of, the, the, of what's possible. I was closed off to my higher self and the greatest version of myself. And once I started accepting me, accepting me, looking in the mirror and feeling like, I am who I am supposed to be. I am who I will become. And I'm, I'm thinking it and I'm believing it. And I'm manifesting everything in my life. And, and, and like um, the opening of a floodgate, the creative energy, the ability to connect with people, to be personal, the ability to see clearly, see my visions and see, see, see my goals very clearly and make those necessary steps to it. I'm telling you, it was like insane. I feel so much more open to the world. I feel so much more creative in every endeavor that I have. So at this point, started my creative studio, uh, started it back in June, J January for New Year's. And since then, it's been a load, load more um, work, more organization that's needed, you know, financials getting, having to be figured out. There's so much more um, to this entrepreneurship lifestyle that um, I didn't, I, I couldn't fully anticipate until I was in it. And so it's hard, but at the end of the day, when I'm thinking back to my cubicles and working in pharma advertising for what, five years, I've never been more happy than I am right now in present day, being unapologetically me, being as creative as I can be at all times and really just being open to the world, open to new stimuli, open to inspiration, open to different places and different cultures to really start to refine myself and to understand myself more and more by looking into, looking into the mirror, one, but also looking into the lives of others and connecting with them on a much more deeper level. So that's where I am. So we, yeah. Awesome, man. We'll, we'll, we'll let people hopefully pop in any questions that they might have for you in the question and answer box. In the meantime, though, I just want to say thank you, man. Um, we can keep it up. We can keep the background going. Um, oh, okay. I'm going to leave the homework up for people to see. Um, but basically, yeah, like, thank you, man. This is, this is as much for me. Like, this, this presentation, this talk is, like, really good advice and wisdom to a creative, to a, to a designer, um, but also just, like, really inspirational for anybody that, like, wants to be their most authentic self and, like, pursue whatever passion it might be just to like believe it you know like just to manifest your own dream. right um and that's the that's the thing everything is possible like everyone just you know we we have to eliminate that fear and just go for what we um want to go for but we got to know ourselves first 
Yeah, he said I, so. I personally think you, I feel like it's like, I've been thinking about writing like a book or like, I don't know, this makes me want to be like, stop thinking about it and like, just do that. <laughs> and, ju and just do that, right, right, right. I had to slap myself in the face the other day because I've been wanting to write a book, uh, some, well, a couple books actually, but um, I, I gained a client a few weeks ago and she's writing, she wrote two books, like a quote every day uh, book and then she's doing like her, her, her own experience. It's called Torments of a Preacher's Wife. Yeah, it's some deep stuff there. And it was inspirational. But this is the thing. I put that energy out there. We all put that energy out there of what we want to do and putting our goals and writing our goals down. And in one way or another, it's going to come back full circle. For sure. And speaking of this, I had this question. Um, mm -hmm. while you were talking. And speaking of writing too, so one of my favorite books about writing is by Stephen King, actually, of all of all authors. Like he wrote this really amazing book, kind of just about his craft of writing, and mm -hmm. it relates to any sort of creative pursuit. But he he challenges people that are serious about it to like take time every day, no matter what. Would you mm -hmm. agree with that, or are you sort of more like when the inspiration strikes you? Um, but like, how do you actually how do you actually approach just like the amount of time it takes for you to like spend doing creative things when you have a goal or you have a deadline? Like, is it every day for you? Like, you wake up and you do two hours no matter what? Or is it like you wait until you feel like, ah, nah? Yeah. So I think the only, the only thing that I really stick to, like, verbatim is in the mornings, uh, meditation before media. Um, that was, uh, Tony Robbins said that in one of his um, seminars, meditation before media. And that, for me, puts my mind in the correct state, right? So I think about all, not work not work. I'm thinking about life goals. I'm thinking about um, how I'm connected to the universe, how I'm magical, how, how, how my creative energy should flourish, and I'm recharging myself. So that's what I do in the morning times. But for um, create, like, like if I'm, when I'm doing like projects and trying to figure out creative and what time to devote to them, it's so freaking hard. It's so, so difficult, but um, I do have to trust my intuition in those instances as well. And that intuition could be, hey, like, go ahead and grab your journal, go ahead and grab your sketchbook, or hey, call this client and ask for a little bit more time because you wanna do something really cool. And when you get into your creative flow, you kind of understand like, all right, it's not here yet, but <laughs> it's coming. So, you know, just being transparent in that. Um, and then, you know what, another thing that really helped me, if you guys, um, I, I mean, we're all working remotely and much of us have to track our times to try to figure out how much we're getting paid or, you know. And um, I, was, I was given this software called TimeCamp. And TimeCamp is, is, is one that takes over your computer um, while, while it's open. You can set it on automatic and it figures out exactly how long you've been in all of these apps for programs so for me being a designer like when I'm taking our sketches or drawings into vector and I have to work on different files or I have to do different digital illustrations like some of the ones you guys seen throughout the presentation I have to know how much time I'm spending in each one and this automatically does it flushes out a whole report to say which file I was in for what time and then I start to manifest more of okay like I can rough ranges, right? Because every creative uh, project is different, but rough ranges of what my process looks like and how much time I have to devote to different things. Um, but, and also a part of this homework, um, I just, I put my Medium account on there because I started writing more posts and I'm gonna keep pushing for it. Um, I actually had a really, really good idea brought to me, and this is for any of the bloggers out there. Um, I'm recording it now. I'm recording, um, I'm recording my thoughts because I think that when I speak, um, it's a little bit more powerful than when I write. Um, I think I use writing for more internal, personal things, but when I want to profess something, I want to speak it. And so um, I'm recording them now and just getting, them, getting the recordings transcribed um, for blog posts. And I'm hoping that's going like, to really improve my efficiency and really get some good thinking and good understanding out there into the world. Um, and then at the end of the day, we got to breathe. We got to take a walk sometimes. We have to play, like work hard, play harder, play harder. That's when all the creative inspiration comes in. That's when you ha you, you're able to push through the toughest of days because you're thinking about what you're doing on the weekend.
And being in remote, yeah, we already know how that is. But you don't want FOMO. You just got to treat yourself. Treat yourself to the best things that life can offer you at this moment. Were, were there any questions that came about or am I just like... Let them pop into the Q&A box. Um, anybody out there, last call? Uh -huh. You guys a second? Um, I got plenty of questions for you, man, but I'll take them offline. <laughs> uh, yeah, we can do that. But uh, I totally believe 100% in all these things. I had a great idea riding my bike the other day, and I always find like when I'm riding my bike and my head is just kind of like empty, then like something will just fly in. It's like the right thing to, to come in at that moment. So, mm -hmm. um, And big thanks to everybody that joined us again today. This this has been recorded, so I'll take the video and put it in, in the, the archive that we keep from all the knowledge drops. Thanks again, Jockery. You're amazing. Perfect. Man. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it's it. a pleasure. Thanks again, everybody, and we'll see you all next time. Peace. Peace.